Welcome back to another episode of Bank Fishing with BLB. Today we're in a whole different car. My current car is in the shop, which is why I haven't been able to make videos for you guys. But today we have transportation. We made it to the lake and we brought a few rods, all kinds of different baits. And we're going to see if we can get it cracking. The goal today hit three different spots, catch a fish from each spot. And I'm going to show you guys what goes through my mind and what kind of baits that I like to throw when it comes to getting back out on the water for the first time in a while. Or if you just lack information on a new lake and you just need to know how to go about catching bass, we're going to have you covered today. So make sure you subscribe to the channel. We're going to try a few different things. We're going to let you know what's going on. I'm going to show you some of my favorite ways to catch bass when I don't know what's going on. And I'm going to explain why they work so great all year long so man let's get to it i meet you on the lake yeah those three sets of combos right there my three ducket rods cold blv 10 it's 18 percent whole bag full of crank baby i am hoping since it's still early it's only like eight o'clock here in florida sun is coming up but we have time to catch something on moving baits so we gotta find something in the midst of all of this mess that is going to work one of my favorite baits, one of my favorite shallow pond baits, the Crush 50 Silent. Something with no rattles, good natural silver colors, lots of flash, and it only dies two to five feet deep. We're going to probably need two of those, maybe two different colors, just depending on the water clarity. I think we may have found our second one. We have one in a shad pattern and another one in almost, this is called a shad burst, but it's kind of just like a silver mineral color or something. Anything eats black and silver. And we have a spinning rod. We're probably going to say that for later the day as it gets hotter. We want to slow down the harder it gets, but the earlier it is, the more moving baits you want to throw. So definitely going to need a medium cranking stick like this ducket combo here. Just one of my favorite go-to green sticks. Just go ahead and get a rig up. Definitely going to start off with this silver, this natural silver color. The sun is up and peaking, so I think the flash from the silver will also help entice a bite. You may have a little bit of purplish on the top, just all kind of freaking sexy shad colors this park is super busy today everybody want to come and post up while i'm filming that all of a sudden today but mm, quite interesting guess they want to be part of a fishing show today we got that pretty girl red duck this is literally probably all i'm taking made it down to the pond baby one rod one lure let's put in some work we got bluebird skies clear high sun it is one of those days today it's going to be tough, it's going to be a grind, but we here, we all here for it, trust me. That's what makes us go even harder. How we're going to do with this crankbait, we're just going to kind of cast around, just kind of cover some water until we can find out where they're at. At least be able to find out where they're sitting at. Just going to speed crank this thing, give it a few pops, give it a few pauses, just whatever it takes to cause a reaction strike. We're just looking for a clue at this point. Gotta make sure that doesn't get caught up in the grass on the edges. Small little dollar pads. Alrighty, this is the only thing I've been catching. It's time to relocate, it's time to think like a bass. Let's go and move to the other side of the lake where there's tons of shade at. So I'll meet you over there. Man, that was a long walk, but I'm loving the shade that I'm sitting on this side compared to the other side. Hopefully that's what it takes to be able to get that bite from the bass. Took about a good five minutes to make it over here. This may even be a suicide mission. Tons of grass on the edges, and we don't have a swim jet tied on. Shame on me. Gonna try to make it work the best way we can with these troubles. Before we even get to fishing, gotta do a snake sweep. Make sure nothing crawls or jumps out. No chance is taken. You can't trust Florida, I'm telling you. Let's pray that we get bit before we hang into some grass. I'm just looking for one good aggressive strike. I just need a hint. It's been a, quite some time now since we caught anything. I just need a need a freaking clue. It's only a matter of time on the shaded side. I can feel it. Steady soul searching. We are walking around almost the whole pond now. Just looking for a clue. Maybe I brought out the wrong baits, but this is one of my confidence baits. And when you have confidence baits, continue to throw them. Do not be afraid. Maybe I'm just not throwing the right retrieve. Maybe I'm just not fishing in the right depth of water. That's kind of my train of thought right now. And I'm just going to keep soul searching until I find Because I believe I have the right bait. Fall time is coming. Even though it may be a bit later in Florida because it's always freaking hot. 
but with the fall time coming bass are going to start busting up on smaller schools of bait fish they want like two to three inch minnows versus big four five and six inch minnows like they do in the summer they love those small easy snacks and they one right there i told you it was just a matter of time it, it was a little one but it was just a matter of time we got us one that's my goal i just want to kind of catch catch one in each spot today uh, goal complete i just at least wanted to catch one from this spot be careful with these little ones man they'll get you hooked it was so freaking aggressive thank you little guy like i mentioned please continue to throw your cup at this base not a big one but man he hit that thing like a stole or something let's get him back in thank you pal not going to lie and that crush 50 is putting in work only a small one but man it's such a great freaking feeling to be able to catch a bass especially after it's been like a month or two but my goal is to catch one fish at three different spots we're going to change locations but i just got to see if i can catch another one that just felt freaking awesome man i want to spend an hour and we caught one small one but i mean it's not bad to be getting back into a fish stick to moving baits from swim baits speed worms crank baits whatever one of your confidence baits may be throw it out early in the morning so now we're going to pack it up head to the next spot see if we can break them down see if we can figure them out over there see if we can catch us another one probably going to have to change techniques at each different spot we go to but we're in we're here we're putting in the work we're grinding and i'm going to meet you there i'm going to show you how to catch a bass at a new spot stay tuned made it to the next spot so this spot is even more pressure than the last spot so i barely come here it's always super loud super noisy and the bass are just freaking hard to catch sorry about the sun being so bright in the background let's see if i turn over here look just slightly better but the first two things i'm thinking about is water clarity and the time of day it was eight o'clock earlier it was like 8 30 when i kind of arrived to the first spot now it is past 9 30 it's closer to 10 o'clock sun is rising slowly but surely it's getting hot it's already humid and all I'm thinking about the first time we brought a crankbait. This time, thinking about just bringing out good old spinning rod. When you have to slow down, you have to throw lighter finesse presentations. You just can't be the spinning rod. Spinning rod will catch you bass all freaking year long. So with the sun coming up, we, we already know we have to slow down. We have to throw a smaller, lighter finesse bait. Two, water clarity. I'm going to usually bring a green pumpkin or some kind of watermelon red, some kind of green color. And I'm always going to bring either purple or black and blue. Green for natural, clear water, for clear, clean water, and a black and blue purpose for your darker, stained water, chocolate, milky water. So I'm just going to kind of bring two different colors of baits. Bring a few for some clear water and a few for some murky water. There's a lot of grass around here, so we gotta stay weedless. We gotta be mindful of that. And we're going to target some grass, target some depth changes, see if we can catch one at another spot. Let's get to it. I just love going to a new spot and breaking in the wet line get the first cast see if we can catch us one sometimes fishing in the heat can be a bit overwhelming a bit frustrating when you don't catch anything you know but sometimes me just got to be ready to put in that time and that effort that's the only thing it takes to catch a bass there's more time more consistency and more effort you can't catch them sitting on the couch and playing video games even though i like to do that from time to time i would like to throw the sunglasses back on probably won't be able to see much of anything water's super murky super muddy down there to fish a drop shot man it takes nothing we just went from power fishing with a crankbait to finesse fishing with a drop shot just cast that thing out there and you just let it sink i almost thought i felt the tap on the line that's all you're waiting for you just kind of tapping on your rod waiting for a fish to tap back keep that bait sitting in place and you just kind of want to suspend it off the bottom it's just dancing in their face man they can't stand it they really can't if they can attract your lure now a lot of grass down there too definitely feel patches of grass gotta be a fish around there somewhere i'm really loving this juggle minnow from six cents lures this thing is just freaking shaking everywhere left right up down it's just giving it this shimmer this shimmy action i just kind of fishing on top of a grass flat right now just going to kind of cast it around fan cast until we find one it's another great thing about drop shot the weight is going to sit on top of the grass versus your lure it's going to be suspended like four to four to eight inches above it so your hook is never exposed to the grass. It's sitting right above it while the weight is down here on the bottom itself. You can get you a good slim drop shot weight and you don't have to worry about that thing ever snagging up. I'm trying to get me a truck. I am about to say bought that car. Huh? Oh, that's a bite right there, fellas. That's, that's a good one right there, fellas. I was over running my mile to one of my buddies over there. He do a lot of professional fishing. And I just hooked up with the drop shot. Let's go. 
Oh, he came up at the last second. That's how you get it done. Just like that, boys and girls. It's just a little juggle minnow natural color. And we catch us a little solid pound bass. I was over here running my mouth, but you see how easy that was? We only spent like 30 minutes out here trying to spend an hour each spot. Man, let's see if we catch us another one before we go. Greatest feeling ever. Drop shot catch them all year long. I'm telling you, use cold BLV, save 10% on anything I fish with from the hooks, the weights, to the lures itself. Man, save some money, catch more bass. Let's get a release. Thank you, buddy. To be honest, throwing natural colors in this murky stained water usually isn't the best. But due to me fishing ponds that we barely catch anything in, I there were freaking five pounders, eight pounders, and I even think I've seen the 10 that's swimming around here in the springtime. There were some freaking big fish, but they are just so hard to catch. When you have super pressure, super finicky bass, you give them something small. Fall time's coming up, throw out a three to four inch little swim bait, little um soft plastic jerk bait, Drop shot, finesse worms, wacky ridge, throw anything smaller, and you'll be able to entice that bite, especially when bass are used to getting fish for a 24 freaking seven. Made it to the final spot for today's trip. Two things, or three things, looking at time of day, it's getting closer to 12 o'clock, the highest peak of the sun for the day, so it's going to get tougher, it's going to get slower. So spinning rod would definitely be a major key factor. Once again, got that bad boy out, and we're also going to bring one of my favorites, one we haven't brought out all video today. But we're going to bring a swim jig rod. We're looking at time of day, fishing tons of grass, and we're going to have to fish slow. So I'm bringing a finesse rod. I'm also bringing something that I can fish around grass. When I think about fishing around grass and shade, because that's where bass are going to go midday, a lot of shade, grass, structure, wherever they can hide that. We're going to definitely need a medium heavy, bring us a swim jig, we can hop it, we can slow it down, we can drag it, we can fish it as necessary, however we may need to. And you just gotta keep your spinning rod on deck because spinning rod is going to catch them all year long. So let's go through a few jigs, see what we're going to get tired of. Definitely have quite a few different swim jigs to choose from. They're falling out my freaking hands. The sun is directly up, so I'm thinking about a natural color, but I also think the water is pretty stained back there. Usually every time you fish a location like this in Florida, the water is always it has like this tea color or this brown or this muddy stain. So we would throw a chartreuse any other given day, but if it was cloudy, I probably would. But due to it being super bluebird skies and the sun is just super out right now, it's going to kind of still with natural, a darker color. Just a little bluegill fire. It's natural, but it also has some dark green in it. Almost like some green pumpkin. And it always works in stained water around here. So only sticking to a quarter ounce. When you're fishing anything that's like under five to six feet deep at the mats, just stick to like a quarter ounce, man. It gets it done all across the country. Trust me. Just get tied up and I'm going to meet you on the lake. Endless trails just goes for miles and miles. It takes forever to get to the freaking fishing spot. To the lake after all of that walking all of that trail hiking that's why we try to stay limited to just a few rods and a few different choice of baits you bring all of that tackle out here and you're just going to hurt yourself and fall out in this florida heat um i'm actually kind of mad i know you guys are thinking it i'm thinking it too b or b why the heck do we not bring a frog for all of these lily pads this would be the perfect time of day with the sun being directly out fish are going to hide up under those pads and grass and that would have been the best opportunity but unfortunately we did not bring any frog rods. We did not bring heavy enough equipment to be throwing frogs today. So we're just gonna to stick to what we got. A lot of lily pads, lots of grass. Swim jigs, you can't beat it. Let's get started. Snake check. No chance to stake around here, buddy. And I know at the car, I did mention I was gonna throw a bluegill color, but I did forget about this white chartreuse. This is also a natural color when the sun is directly out. It shines and it reflects that white so freaking great in the water. And thinking about this time of the year where it's going into the fall transition, anything that mimics shad is always great. So let's get it in there and get aligned with it. Last time I was out here, I almost lost this same freaking swim jig I have tied on. I did lose one that day. I almost lost two. And I had to adjust my settings on my bait caster. So now I'm casting like all wonky. This looks perfect. We have a fish attractor out there. Even though it really attracts fish, if anything, it attracts you to cast over that didn't get snagged on the artificial reef. But we also have lily pads right here on the edges, and sometimes the bass will sit right next to them just waiting to ambush something. You never know. Just got to keep fishing until you find them. My drag. My drag. Oh, my God. 
No, my freaking drag was too loose. I just had a bite. Did I mention that I broke off on this same reel a couple of weeks ago and I forgot to tighten down all of my settings and I should just kept running backwards with that one. Free. I checked every freaking setting from the brakes to the magnetic casting control on it, right? But I just did not check that freaking drag. Like, come on. That's unreal. First bite after like an hour and a half to two hours and a lot of walking, a lot of grinding, a lot of struggling. Not knowing when that fish catch is going to come. And that's how I pay myself off, shaking my head. Let's pray we can get another one. I may not get another bite for another two hours. That was him right there. I almost got snapped in the past, which is usually pretty easy for me to avoid. But today, just, just one of those days at this moment. <sighs> Gar bit my tail off. That's the way to do it. Just had another little small bite. Just wasn't even really a bite. Just literally poured on the powder tail part of my trailer. I just can't get any success. Whew. That's about all she wrote, folks. It is super hot here in Florida. We spent about two, two and a half hours at this location. Had two bites that we could not capitalize on. That just freaking devastated my soul. Hope you was able to learn something today. I hope I gave you a few pointers, a few ideas, just a few different things to think about when you're trying a new pun or you just don't know what to throw at a location you haven't been to in quite some time. Sometimes all it takes is just to bring out the simple stuff. Keep it simple, throw finesse base, bring a spinning rod, and you can get the job done. Swim jig also gets, gets it done, even though I had a horrible mistake on my end with the drag being too loose. If you want to see more videos like this, man, let me know in the comments. If you want to see videos of me breaking down rod selection for each different techniques, if you want a whole video on that alone, drop in the comments, let me know, man, I got you. I'm here to help you catch more bass 365 days of the year. So until next time, you guys stay safe. Go catch tons of fish for me. And until next time, stay safe, catch tons of fish, tag me on social media, and I'll catch you on the water next time. Peace.